real things to listen to the Word of God. And today I want to speak about three principles about listening to the Word of God that we can learn from the Gospel. But before, let's first understand the context of the Gospel today. The Gospel of St. Mark, which was read today, gives us a little insight. It tells us that this was a rich man, because it says he had great possessions. So we know from this Gospel that he was a rich man. From the Gospel of St. Matthew, it tells us that this Gospel was young, or this man was young. So we see that he was rich and young. In the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 18, and I say chapter 18 because I'll reference chapter 18 from Luke later, but we learn that this man was actually a ruler. He was a chief, archon in Greek. He had authority. So he was rich, he was young, and he had some kind of authority. So by all accounts, you could say that this li his life was... Amazing. Pretty good. Yeah, he had a very good life. Very, like, great life. Rich, young, and ruler, authority. Great. And even more than that, actually, he was a follower of the law. And actually felt very justified that he had fulfilled all the law. He was a good person. He was a good person. But despite having all of those things... The Lord said, and he even felt that he was lacking something. And the Lord said, you lack one thing. You lack something. You're missing something in your life. Go your way, sell whatever you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come and take up your cross and follow me. And his response? He got sad. He got sad. This rich man got sad. I can't give away all of these things. The three principles that I want to talk to you about today is first, we must distinguish. The first principle is we must distinguish between the rules and the rule giver. The rules and the rule giver. The rich man felt okay because he was following the rules by his own standard. But he didn't know who the rule giver was. And what's worse is that he glorified the rules more than the actual rule giver. Like sometimes we think we're okay because we follow certain rules. We come to church every week. We do the, we do the rules. But do you know about the rule giver? Do you have a relationship with the, the rule giver? I heard something very nice this week that I want to share with you. It was, imagine like, uh, let's say I go on vacation, or I'm on business trip or whatever. I'm away from my family. And Michelle misses me. So she looks at, <laughs> it's a fictional story. So she's looking at the picture of, like, uh, of me and says, Oh, I miss my husband. I miss my husband. I miss my husband. I miss my husband. Then, eventually I come back from this trip. And I say, hi wife, I missed you. But then she goes to the picture and holds the picture and gives the picture a hug. She likes the picture more than she... She likes the action... Oh, oh, give me a hug. I want the hug, not the picture. The Pharisees can okida. Loving the, the icon, the picture, but not loving the author behind the picture of who the picture was about. Yanni, can you imagine the high priest, his job is to offer sacrifices on account, and they have the Lord of hosts, Jesus Christ, in front of them. The person, this is their job, is to serve God. And when the Lord Jesus Christ comes in front of them, they don't like, they want the picture, they want the, the rules, and they hug the picture. The rich man can kida. He was like that. He likes the rules, he likes all this stuff, but doesn't know who the person behind the picture is. That's why the, fair, like, the Lord said, These people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, and in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandment of men. The people who love rules more than the rule giver, actually they love the praise of men. And we talked about the praise of men a lot, so I won't... But they love the praise of men. That's why if you look at the epistle of St. Paul in Galatians, he says there was some rules... He said, for not even those who are circumcised keep the law. The ones who are circumcised, they, they're supposed to be keeping the law, but they don't keep the law. But they desire to have you circumcised. They want to circumcise you. 
Why? They want you to be circumcised that they may boast in your flesh. This is Galatians 6. So they can boast in your flesh. And then later on, St. Paul, he says, For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but a new creation. Means that you need to know the person behind the rule, not the rule itself. Yeah? I want to be people that just focus on the rules and not know the, the essence of the rule. Why is the rule important? The second principle is... This one really like touches a core in me. We should never be sad after we meet the Lord. We can never be sad after we meet the Lord. It's possible to come to the Lord sad. You can come in whatever shape you are. I know I'm sad, I'm angry, I'm upset, I'm this, I'm all these things. And you can be all those things. But when you leave the Lord, you have to leave. You have to leave happy. You cannot leave the Lord. If you leave the Lord sad, then feel something wrong, like critically inside. There's something wrong in you if you leave the Lord sad. You know, one of the things that bothers me a lot, and I know maybe I'm not the only person that is like this, is that if you go to a restaurant hungry, if you leave hungry, that is like the end of the world, bin is bad, like, and I'd be so upset. Why am I spending money to go to a restaurant and then to eat? And then I leave hungry? Why? Why do you do why, like why go to a restaurant then? If I'm paying for food, I want the food to fill me up. If you go to the Lord, how can you leave sad? If you go to the Lord, you have to come out full. You have to come out complete. That's why if you go later on in Luke 18, remember this, the pair, this rich man is also in Luke 18, talks about a blind man. And the blind man was crying and saying, Son of David, have mercy on me. Son of David, have mercy on me. And then the Lord gave him his sight, and then after it says he received his sight, it says he followed him and glorified God, and all the people when they saw it gave praise to God. And you know, one who gets healed from Hayad, like he's going to be sad after he gets healed. After the Lord heals you, you're going to be sad. It doesn't work. You have to leave happy. The widow of Nain, there's a funeral procession for her son, her only son, and she's a widow. They're sad. It's a funeral. They meet the Lord on the way. Just like they met this rich man, just on the way. And when he, they met the Lord, the Lord changed this funeral procession now into happy. You cannot meet the Lord and be sad. You cannot. It would be very... Sad, like what, what, gets me, what makes me sad is when we say we have Bible study or we have prayer meeting or we have thing, and people are sad. It's like, oh man, why? Or if you say, can you pray for... No, 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 I don't pray. Why? If you ask someone to pray, no. Why? You're supposed to be happy. You're supposed to be happy. I was reading something the other day. Say, why is your church weak? Your church is weak because you don't have prayer meetings. Because if I say, let's have prayer, until you get sad. Why you get sad? Then you're like the rich man. Mufrut, to be happy. You're supposed to be happy. When you meet the Lord, you're supposed to be very happy. Because meeting the, the Lord is like meeting the bridegroom. Like on the day of my wedding, I remember, I didn't sleep. I was so excited to meet, like to have the wedding and the whole... It's the, amazing. You have to be excited to meet. The, if it was the day of your wedding, aren't you going to be excited? When to not excited and to didn't get it. <laughs> you have to be like, weren't you excited to meet your bridegroom? You have to be every Sunday to be excited to meet your bridegroom. The bridegroom is with us today. To come meet the bridegroom, you be very excited. Wake up early. Dress up nice. It's the bridegroom. Be very happy. It's your wedding feast. Even Saint John the Baptist. 
Look at what St. John, the, he said, the friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him, is he sad? No, he rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. Therefore, this joy of mine is fulfilled. St. John was so happy to go see the bridegroom. Allah, I want you guys to be happy. It's not like, like torture to come to the, like, and this isn't a torture chamber here to have you hold you in church. And that, and that, we have to change this mind that uh, we're, we're being tortured. Why? You have to be happy. That's why in the Agbaya prayers we say, whenever we stand in your holy sanctuary, we are considered standing in heaven. To make you happy or to be very sad? To be in front of the holy sanctuary, we are considered standing in heaven. Tabuento, why it looks so sad? Make a smile, kida. Yeah, be happy, very happy. No one meets the Lord and to be sad. In Ezekiel 46, the Lord shows him a new temple, a new temple. And the Lord gives instruction to Ezekiel, very special instructions for this new temple. And one of the beautiful instructions that he gave Ezekiel was, he said to Ezekiel, when the people come to worship the Lord at any festival, those who enter by the north gate, they have to leave from the, the south gate. And after they have worshipped, and those who enter by the south gate, they have to leave by the, the north gate. No one, this is the rule for worship that God gave to Ezekiel, said, no one may go out the same way he entered but must leave by the opposite gate. No one can come sad and leave sad. No one can come hungry and leave hungry. Everyone, when they meet the Lord, to be happy, fulfilled. The third principle, if the Lord asks you to give up something, He's going to give you way more in return. Some people think that the Lord was too hard on this man, maybe. Saying, give all, but he's rich, it's too hard. And sometimes we think the idea that the Lord is trying to exclude him. Like he set the bar so high for this rich man, the bar is here. And, and Jesus set the bar very high and then said, try to jump over it. Ha ha, you can't make it. Ha ha ha. You're not, you're not athletic, you can't do it. And was making fun. No. McKench, it's not like that. The Lord set the bar high for him because he knew this person could do it. And it says in the gospel, it says that Jesus loved him. Loved him. It wasn't like, ha ha ha, you can't do this. Like exclusionary. Like the gospel does too high for all of you. And to, no. He set the bar and he loved him and wanted him to go over the bar. Why? Because if God is doing something to you, or asking you to let go of something, to let go of something, means he wants to give you much more in return. Look at the life of Abraham. The life of Abraham, God said to Abraham, give up your father's land. I don't want to give up my father's land. I want to stay with my father. But I'm going to give you the promised land. If you come with me, I'll give you the promised land. It's much better to take the promised land or this little piece of land of your father. No, I'll give you the promised land. Abraham had a son. His name was Ishmael. And then God said, or actually Sarah said, and then God confirmed, get rid of this son. Let him go. Don't worry. But Abraham loved Ishmael. He said, I don't... Uh, uh, this, why? But God said, I'm going to give you another son. Give up this son, the son of the slave woman, and I'm going to give you the son of the promise. The son of promise. I'll give you another son. I'll give you something better. Just give up Ishmael, and I'll give you one better. Then he said... Take the only son, the son of promise that you have, give him to me. Give him to me. I want him. 
sacrifice him to me. And I will give you... And God, uh, is, this is my only son, and I'm old. When, uh, how? But Abraham gave his only son, Isaac, and because of his faith, he was rewarded descendants as stars in the sky and sand on the seashore. If God is asking you to give something, it's because He wants to give you much more. The foolish one, the foolish one, would say, no, I'm happy with the, the little that I have. and I'll, That would be foolish. St. Anthony, he read the same verse, this same verse, and he gave up all and became the father of monks. And he had honor on this earth, and he had honor, the, like the most honor in heaven, Allah. Because whenever God asks you to give up something, He's going to give you way more in return. Even in the gospel of today, the people were asking, why should we give up all these things? Jesus answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers, sisters, fathers, mother, wife, children, or lands, for my sake in the gospel, who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time, houses and brothers, sisters and mothers, children and lands, with persecution in this age to come, and then eternal life. You see the three principles? The three principles were? What were the three principles? Distinguish between the rules and the rule giver. We should never be sad. Oh, Atukunu said, after you meet the Lord. You cannot. It's impossible. Don't be sad after you meet the Lord. And if the Lord asks you to give up something, it's because He wants to give you way more in return. I want to close with a small prayer. We've not done this before. But I thought this was very touching. Psalm 118, the second part that's on the screen right here, it talks about a young man. It talks about an, a young man. And how shall the young man straighten his way? How? How shall the young man... How shall we give all and follow the Lord? How? It says... How shall the young man strain it? By keeping your words. With my whole heart I have sought you. Then later on it talks about what we delight in. It says, I have delighted in your way, in the way of your testimonies as much as in all. What do I mean? Not happy. Fin. Huh? As much as in all riches. Because the rich man is tied to Riches. So now we're going to pray and say, no, actually our delight is not in our riches. Our delight is in, in your word. And we said the theme of this month is listening to the word. I hope, let's maybe we can stand together and we can pray this, uh, this psalm together. Can we stand together and pray this psalm together? And glory be to God forever. Amen. Where was young man? She is